it's about quarter to seven again. Um, aye, time to get up, I think. So that's where we were. Death by Midgey. We're moving on now. Glad to be. And I always hate the pack in the tent when you're being eaten alive, like, there's nothing worse. So I was thinking last night how much I've screwed up my trip by losing that water filter because my last day was going to be close to Aviemore obviously because that's where I'm trying to get to and I'm going to be drinking from streams there there's so many wee buildings dotted around um, so yeah I'm not sure what I'm going to do today I know here the streams are probably fine and I've been drinking out of streams like that for years. I've only started using the filter the last couple of years. But you know, when you get close to, close to civilization, it's a completely different thing, isn't it? Finally reached a place with a wee bit of a breeze. This has been dead calm all through the night. Which is why the midges were having so much fun. It had been that hot day when we started and then the rain and then no wind. It was an orgy for them. How awesome is that? Wee garden. When I'm imagining doing trips like these, I imagine my tent in this awesome setting with the sun shining and uh, the rea well, the reality is, if you're doing a point-to-point -point hike uh, the tent goes up when the time's right and when it's practical and that's it um, and uh, also, the, the last two nights uh, once I was in the tent, that was it shut the door and go to sleep I wasn't sitting outside admiring everything. Um, just midges last night and uh, rain the first night, pretty much. Uh, were the reasons for that. But uh, shame, shame really, because both settings were pretty nice. This is a nice but nice to have trees again. Well that was the Gak or Gak Pass. Definitely uh, best suited for a mountain bike I'd say. See why it's popular for that. It's very flat, like you're 
generally around 450 metres for miles. It looks like it's trying to clear up. That's looking back down the pass. This is the River Tromey. That's looking down Glen Tromey and we're going to be heading up to the right into the trees on a path, I hope. Let's find out. Well, it's heading in the right direction. We've just come up from there. We've got our first distant view for a while. It's kind of looking straight down Glen Tromey basically and uh, we're on the squelchy path heading for Glen Feshy. That's you Finn, let's go. So I think that's the Alt Ban or something like that. So Finn, shall we get a cup of cup of coffee and a wee, a wee bit of breakfast down by the river, eh? Does that sound good? I think that's a yes. Although not to the coffee, but for the dog, obviously. This'll do. And there's a breeze. And it's stony. So there's no midges. Woo! Yet. I try to do this sort of stuff for fun. And see, at the moment, this is really nice. Because there's no midges. The weather's good. I'm eating breakfast at the right time. But see if I was trying to do this by the tent this morning and with the midges. Nah. Beans fin. <laughs> this is what he needs though. This is totally what he needs. <laughs> Behind you. <laughs> yes, well done. As a puppy, Finn used to be scared of water. I remember the first time we crossed the river together. And yeah, well, these days, that river back there, he just took a, a run and jump into it. Like, it was deeper than him. He didn't care. It's brilliant to see. Thing is, he, he could have hurt himself as well. And when I'm letting him loose like this and he's going wild, he can hurt himself. That's just the gamble, isn't it? <laughs> the gamble. So I, I have actually been along here before, about, I think it was about 10 years ago. I drove to Blair Athol, took the train to uh, Kingusi, and then ran up Glen Tromey and did the Minigig Pass, which you can just sort of see the line of. It's like an ancient route, you know, the old route to Inverness. Um, it was uh, it was quite pretty tough actually heading up that and along this as well. Obviously for running, <laughs> pretty technical stuff. Um, but yeah, good day as well. Ten years. <laughs> Put the jacket away so when it comes some weather. Yeah, this track isn't on my map. This is obviously very new. It's going the right way, so what the heck, yeah? Well, I got close to the track I wanted to be on. I could see daylight through the trees, so I went for it. So now we're back on the right track, because I didn't know where that was going. And a lot of that was impregnable. Although, I say that, and now you can see the road I've just bashed to get onto from here. <laughs> A quell. I think I'm just gonna... What to do? What to do? Stick to plan A. Scratch that. So this might be the original track I meant to be on, but I think the wee path that I was gonna be taking cuts off about here anyway. So I'm gonna take a gamble, because this is actually the way I... This is actually plan A down here. Stupid layer off. Now that I know there's no big six foot deer fence around this, I'm not so worried. And the fact I can see open hillside again. And the track going the right direction into the distance, that's got to be good. 
it's worth it. Well, it's not a punt, it's the way I was going to go anyway. There's a lot of good forestry generation going on here. I'm not sure how they're keeping the deer off it, but let's uh, see the pock marks over there as well. Yeah, there's one. Is that a wee birch? Dunno. You see a Scots pine there, it's nice. The track's still taking us the right way. That's good. So I just come out of the woods and the track's joined us, which is where I hoped we'd be. This will take us into Glen Feshy, down the other side of that burn. It has to be Loch. There we go, welcome to the Cairngorms proper. Nice to see trees again. I'm back in the realm of holiday cottages and I'm trying to stay hydrated but there's a disturbing lack of uh, burns flowing down off the, the hillside um, so it's actually stressing me out <laughs> the lack of water um, ah what an arse <laughs> and even though I do have the water filter 
I usually carry a two litre platypus bag and for some stupid reason I didn't pack that for this trip. Ah, that's it. I've made the call. I'm bottling it. I'm getting my dad to collect us a day early from Feshy Bridge because I'm just... <laughs> I'm not, I'm not enjoying it anymore. Uh, I saw the phone mast and I thought, right, I'm going to give it a... Give him a call before it gets too late. So, do you mind picking us up tonight instead of tomorrow? Actually, when I made the call, I wasn't going to ask for that. I was just going to explain where we're at. Um, but then he offered and I thought, yeah, that sounds, uh, that sounds like the more fun option, to be honest. Um... And then we can relax a bit more again and enjoy what's left of the walk. I'm really, yeah, a fail, total fail on my part. Just uh, <laughs> complacency. You know, you you get you've got to keep your kit all the time and you unpacking, packing, uh, make sure you've got essentials. <laughs> This is the second water filter my dad's given me and the second water filter I've lost. <laughs> I know you're thirsty too Finn, but I really don't want you jumping in that. That's the funny thing about this glen, there's no real any sort of tributaries, they all seem to disappear under rock. <laughs> That's about two hours without a drink or anywhere. Well, I haven't seen anywhere to get water along here at all. Well, I'm way past where I think it would be safe anyway. Like, you know, fields with sheep and electric fences and civilization. Might have to start drinking from ditches like the dog does. There we go. This is a nice wee path. I'm really appreciating these waymarking posts in the Scottish Rights of Way Society. Yeah, uh, definitely the right call. Much more relaxed rather than worrying about logistics, which isn't why I'm doing this. <laughs> but different from the rest of the walk anyway. You got a stick. Leave. Good boy. You ready? Oh man, it's gonna break. Yep. <laughs> Go get part of the stick. <laughs>